Joining me now to discuss the top stories of the day is The Australian's political correspondent, Jeff Chambers. Jeff, great to see you. Overnight, we saw a $4 billion rescue plan for Swiss banking giant Credit Suisse. This is amid fears that it would collapse and trigger another GFC. Jeff, what are the details of this UBS bailout? Yeah, so the Swiss government and the National Bank uh, were forced into uh, engineering this uh, rescue deal, a sweetheart rescue deal for Credit Suisse, which has been a basket case for a long time now. And what the deal uh, involves is uh, uh, protections for UBS, another Swiss bank, uh, against uh, many cases of litigation that Credit Suisse was facing across the globe. Uh, it ensures that a, a Swiss bank, um, which is always put on a pedestal, uh, avoids collapse uh, and it provides some uh, return for shareholders uh, from Credit, Credit Suisse. So um, I think what we've seen uh, is definitely a knock-on effect from the collapse of the Silicon Valley Bank uh, over in the States, which was highly exposed uh, to the tech crash over there uh, and, and also raises questions about US regulations. Uh, so, look, I think the uh, when we're talking about... Uh, non-bank lenders uh, and, and some other uh, institutions, yeah. uh, including here in Australia. You're obviously, uh, you know, you're exposed when you're taking, uh, you know, uh, when you're lending money without deposits uh, and, and you're heavily exposed to financial markets uh, and, and the global cost of uh, funding. Well, Jeff, as you say, you know, there are concerns now, even in Australia, about non-bank lenders, managed funds, other institutions that aren't as highly regulated as banks. The Reserve Bank of Australia Assistant Governor Chris Kent, he does say that our banks remain unquestionably strong. There is still growing uncertainty globally now about a contagion effect. How concerned are our central banks and economists getting? Look, I think Australia is in, in a pretty good position. Um, so his comments are, are realistic to a point. Uh, we're obviously banks here are much more tightly regulated around stricter capital and, and liquidity rules, uh, but they are highly exposed uh, to the residential property market. So um, there is some exposure uh, for, for our banks, but when you look at the US uh, and their banking system is just linked to um, so much mismanagement and a light regulatory, regulatory touch particularly for the smaller banks, which is what we saw uh, with Silicon Valley. So um, I think, you know, I think you know, in, in the event of a global recession and, and further shocks in, across the banking industry, we saw what happened with the GFC. So therefore, our, our banks do have exposure. Um, the short term uh, uptake, uh, positive, I guess, for, for uh, some Australians, you know, mortgage holders here, uh, is that um, yeah. uh, Westpac and uh, JP Morgan are now looking towards the RBA's next meeting uh, in, in April and they, they, they believe that uh, there'll be a hold on, on, on rates and all eyes are turning uh, yeah. to the US this week where the US Federal Reserve uh, are meeting and uh, are believed to be looking at a, a quarter of a percent rate hike. Yeah, look, and if, if there is a pause on rates or if they do start to cut rates when inflation is still quite high, there's going to be a lot of debate about whether they, the RBA here is doing the right thing. And we're going to have more on this story and the possibility of a banking crisis uh, throughout the show. Now, Jeff, you're in Canberra. It's the first big week of parliamentary sittings today. Now, the government's fighting to pass its climate bill, the safeguard mechanism through the Senate. Where's that up to? Look, uh, so they've got four big pieces of legislation that have to be dealt with in this fortnight uh, because we then have that long break before the May 9 budget. Uh, the safeguard mechanism, uh, which is requiring Australia's biggest emitters to slash pollution faster so that Labor can hit their 2030 target, which will be difficult, um, that will probably be up next week. And from what I'm hearing, the Greens are softening their language uh, and it's looking more likely that the Greens, uh, Pocock and a second crossbencher uh, will get that through. And now that, that's just related to um, the carbon credits, so creating a new safeguard mechanism credit. It's all very confusing, I know. Um, but uh, that's looking more likely. They're, they're facing big challenges around their $10 billion um, Housing Australia Future Fund and also uh, the $15 billion National Reconstruction Fund. 
uh, and then they're also working through the yeah. detail of the uh, referendum machinery legislation. Um, so there's a lot going on. Okay. We're not seeing much of it in public or in question time because uh, all this deal making is happening behind closed doors. But uh, look, I think uh, exactly. I think for all the Greens rhetoric, Jeff. I think that they'll um, they'll get there. They'll, they'll fold eventually. Now, I want to get to another couple of big stories today. According to a report in The Australian today by your colleague Simon Benson, uh, Treasury is now looking at a proposal to cut back on work-related tax deductions. This is in order to save $10 billion a year in the budget. It seems like it's really crunch time now um, after, you know, a $370-odd billion uh, expense with the submarines that, that we're looking at other proposals like this. Has the government responded to this today? And what are the concerns about how this could impact on small and medium-sized businesses? Yeah, so you'll recall that Jim Chalmers uh, last month released an updated tax expenditure statement, which the Coalition framed as a bit of a shopping list, looking at various concessions and uh, uh, deductions around work-related expenses uh, around, you know, in the top five, uh, and its forecasts uh, that they will, uh, that, that looks around revenue foregone in 22, 23 of around $10.4 billion. Now, my understanding is that uh, Treasury are looking at uh, ways that they can claw back some money there, um, but that hasn't yet uh, landed on the Treasurer's desk. Um, but they keep telling us that all options are on the table. Uh, and, and what I think they might end up doing is uh, tapping the ATO uh, to potentially. Uh, crack down and, and look a bit closer at deductions around work-related expenses. And that's where individuals and small uh, businesses get caught up because they obviously heavily rely on that, work with their accountants uh, to yeah. uh, claim uh, what they want to claim. And, look, the Coalition did look at this in 2016 um, and a, a proposal was brought forward, but ultimately they, they rejected it. OK. Now, finally, Jeff, China has accelerated its construction of coal-fired power stations. This is breaking a promise that Xi Jinping made to phase out coal. Jeff, has the international community responded to this in any way, shape or form at all? Well, I feel like this is like a perennial story every single year. And I don't know why anyone believes Xi Jinping uh, or the Chinese government uh, that they actually care about climate change. They're the world's biggest polluter. Um, when I was there in 2017, I, I met with a senior commerce ministry official who told me flat out that uh, there's no way in the world they're going to stop building coal-fired power plant. And it's, a both, it's the same for China and India. They're not going to let anything stand in the way of, of growth uh, or, or letting the lights turn out yeah. uh, in their massive cities. So I, I think it's just uh, nonsense. And, and I think for the Biden administration... Uh, to pretend like they're making inroads uh, with China on climate change is ridiculous. All right, Jeff Chambers, thank you very much for your time tonight.